it's important that if we don't know who we are, then how we know what to do now and where we're going. Because in our in the Bible is the history of the Bantu people, mm -hmm. uh, our past, our present, how we got to the situations or the condition that we're in today and where we're supposed to be in the future. Is that your reference point, the Bible? Welcome to Something Nice with Dinano. Thank you very much for joining us on our latest interview. It's the beginning of 2024, and we want to bring you nothing but the best of conversations. Before we get going with today's conversation, I want you to think about something. This has to be your own opinion. This has to be based on your reality, on your truth. Take a moment and think about the greatest lie ever told. Take some time to think about it. In your head, what's coming through? In your opinion, this is your view. No one else is responsible for this thought but yourself. In your opinion, what is the greatest lie ever told to human beings? Think about it. Write it on the comments. Like the video. Share if you gain value from it. We are interviewing a very interesting man. Ronald Dalton Jr., author, filmmaker, thinker, researcher, scholar, who has written a couple of books and has produced a couple of films, one titled From Hebrews to Negroes. Black America, wake up. He's also saying, Africa, wake up. And I want to take it further and say, world, wake up. The truth is out there. The truth is here. It's for you to hear and you decide what you want to do with it. Let's get into the conversation. Yeah, we're good to go. Ron Dalton Jr. That's my name. <laughs> Movie director, yes. author, proud, should I say Jew, Israelite? No Jew, Israelite. Okay, yeah. researcher, a student of history. What else am I missing? Father. Cool. Husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man of God? Man of God. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, I've, I've watched your documentary. Mm -hmm. And I think it's powerful, a lot of information. And it's interesting information. I like the fact that you always revert back to the Bible. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that watch something nice with Dinano are Christian brothers and sisters who would really appreciate anything that references the Bible for whatever it says. Mm -hmm. What is your mission? The simple answer is to wake up uh, black people. Um, not it, When I say black people, um, the title of the book is Wake Up Black America. Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America. Um, here in Africa, um, when we showed the movie, um, the event was titled on the flyer, Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Africa. Because um, I understand that we cannot talk about our ancestral roots and our lineage, our pedigree, um, where we come from without connecting back to Africa. Um, we, we all know the history of slavery. And so, if we do research, like I've done, and it shows that we are connected to the 12 tribes of Israel and the, the original Jew, if they want to say that, um, the descendants of Jacob, then we also have to look into Africa because we come from Africa, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And so, you know, it's, 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 you know, being from America, you know, I, I, I want to wake up my people. That's the reason why I, I subtitled the book Wake Up America, Wake Up Black America. But um, there's more of us uh, in the continent of Africa um, than in the diaspora. And so 
hitting the Caribbean, hitting America or the Americas and Europe is fine, but we have to take it back to the continent because there's hundreds and thousands of millions of people in the continent uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa that I believe don't know who they really are. Um, they may know who, what tribe they come from, um, such as Igbo, Yoruba, Zulu, Swati, and they may say they're South African, Nigerian, Ghanaian, Congolese, but at the end of the day, these words do not tell us anything about our ancestral lineage, our pedigree, where we come from, our history, uh, as it goes back thousands of years, not just to colonial times in the 14 and 1500s. I'm thinking, you say, a lot of us don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, as a South African, as an African, why should I be looking to an American to tell me who I am? Who are we? Well, anybody can do research. Um, if you ask somebody um, what does the word Nigeria mean, they may not know. Um, well, what does the word Niger come from? Is it a, a Greek word? Is it a Latin word? Um, in Latin, the word Niger or Niger means black. In the Portuguese language, the word Negro means black. In the Arabic language, Aswad means black. In the Hebrew language, Shakur means black. So when you say that I'm Nigerian, um, it, what, what does that mean? Um, who is your ancestral forefather? Um, if you go back to 2000, 3000 BC, um, when we had civilizations like the ancient Egyptian civilization, the ancient Kush civilization, the ancient Sumerian civilization, even going back to the ancient Indian civilization in India and the ancient Chinese civilization. Uh, so we have to really understand that, that we may be told you know, okay, you're from this tribe, um, you're Nigerian. But each person, um, if they talk to the elders, they talk to those that know the history of the priest, they have an oral history that tells of how they got to where they are today, how they even got the name Igbo or Yoruba or Zulu or Kosa. And, and if you understand that sometimes uh, the people that know the oral history, they can only go back so far. Um, and sometimes you might find conflicting um, information in where do we come from. Um, but when you look at some of the most ancient historical accounts, uh, things that we can tangibly see and touch, uh, we can actually see and understand that there is an ancient Hebrew language that existed in 2000 BC. It's written on the walls in Egypt. They found some of these writings in the Congo. There's ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. There's ancient Sumerian cuneiform writings. There's old archaic Chinese. Um, when you ask the Bantu person or a in, in person in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, where is your written language, your script? They're not gonna know what it is. You say, well, I mean, every civilization has a language and they have a, a way that they write down things, um, whether it was on rock, or parchment, animal skins, or papyrus reeds, or paper. And I always ask the question, why is it that in Sub-Saharan Africa that the Bantu people don't have their own original writing script? When we write using our language, we write it in the English script, or the Roman uh, Latin script, or the Arabic script, if, if you're a Muslim. Uh, and that's a part of civilization to have a written language because with a written language, you can see how far back your people have been writing things, even if it's just hieroglyphics or symbols on a wall. Um, so it's important that we, you know, in this in day and age, we investigate a lot of things, the stuff that's in the, in the rock caves, like the paintings in the rock caves. We investigate uh, things that's in the earth, like skeletons. Uh, we in investigate the bones the skull shape, the mandible, the maximum, the angles of the face, we investigate DNA. Mm. Uh, we investigate a lot of these things to come to the conclusion of where we come from, who are we? Um, because inside a lot of the Bantu languages, um, you will see evidence of ancient Hebrew and Egyptian. And so that, that makes up the foundation of the Bantu languages. And in many cases, you'll see a, a, a strong foundation, uh, meaning a basis foundation in the Bantu languages that links up to ancient Hebrew and how it operates in the morphology, the lexicon, and the syntax, or morphology, syntax, and lexicon. Mm -hmm. 
this is how we formulate uh, language. Uh, language. <clears throat> and so you cannot look at that and say, hmm, my language has elements of ancient Egyptian and ancient Hebrew in it, um, but I'm, I'm from the, the, the Zulu tribe. But why does your language have elements and evidence of ancient Hebrew in it and Egyptian in it? Well, if you ask some of the people that are of Nguni descent, uh, they may tell you that that a long time ago that they left from Egypt and they eventually made their way down south to the tip of, uh, of, of South Africa. And we know this to be true because to get to South Africa, either you're going to arrive on a boat from the Indian Ocean or Atlantic Ocean or you're going to come from the north to the south. So there's a lot of things that I look at and I, and I research um, to uncover a lot of the, the historical information that a lot of us are missing uh, in America, in the Caribbean, even in Africa. And what I've found is that it tells us more about our history uh, than what we have been taught in school, maybe been taught by elders, what we've been taught by church. It's important that if we don't know who we are, then how we know what to do now and where we're going. Because in our in the Bible, is the history of the Bantu people. Mm. Uh, our past, our present, how we got to the situations or the condition that we're in today and where we're supposed to be in the future. Is that your reference point, the Bible, or are there other historical references that you use? I've, by the way, watched your documentary, the first one. I think there are three of them, if I'm not mistaken, the films? Yeah, Okay. Three I watched films. the first one. And what stood out for me and what resonated with, with me was that you go back to the Bible, you also reference a lot of historical events and these, these drawings from days past and decades and centuries past, right? Stuff from, from the Congo, stuff from West Africa, stuff from Egypt. Mm -hmm. Where's our reference point? Where's our premise? Where do we start this journey of saying these are the people of the Bible? These are the Israelites, the mm -hmm. Hebrews, is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Just take us through your, your research that you've come up with in the documentary. It's, it's, it's full of knowledge, and I okay. encourage you, get hold of this man. He's going to leave his details here so that you can be able to watch the documentary yourself and get this knowledge. Well, the word bam, Bantu or a Bantu, um, they don't use this term in West Africa. So you're not going to hear the Mandinkas or the Serer or the Wolof or the Tukulor or the Crew or the uh, Ashanti say the word Bantu. But the word Bantu has an origin in Hebrew and Egyptian. So back in the, in the, in the Old Testament, the Hebrews lived amongst the Egyptians. Uh, Joseph was, was already there. He already had a wife and he had two kids, Ephraim and Manasseh. And, and Joseph's 11 brothers came into Egypt. And they sojourned there for hundreds of years. And remember, um, Jacob's only daughter was Dina. So if these men walked into Egypt and stayed there for hundreds of years. Then who did these men have children with to procreate and to become fruitful and to multiply in the land of Egypt? Where it says in the scriptures that the children of Israel are more and mightier than we are. Uh, unless they continue to multiply and gain allies, they can take over Egypt. So the Bible says that in those days that the land of Egypt was full of Israelites, uh, just as much as there were Egyptians. So when we look at that, um, we have to look at the fact that the Egyptians um, played a, a big part in the development of who we are today. Uh, our foundation was Hebrew, but when we started to live amongst the Egyptians and intermix among them and had children with them, learn their language, learn their traditions, their customs, learn all their idols, like the Bible says not to do um, when they came out of Egypt. We had to understand that our origin of the Bantu people starts in that area in Northeast Africa. So the word Ba in Hebrew or Bena or Bam, uh, which is sometimes corrupted um, from the, the Jews today. But these words, Ben, Ba, Bana, means the son or the people uh, of. And the word Ntu, N-T-U, is an Egyptian term 
that is seen with the with the life giving energy or the energy of the universe or the cosmos or basically God or the creator. Uh, so when you say bond to, you're basically saying the people of God or the okay. people of the creator or the people of the most high. Not to mess up with your train of thought, but now I'm thinking back to something I've heard growing up. We are called Bantu. Sing about Kwantu. So Kwa means off. And if you say Ndu means God, so it means people of God. Mm -hmm. And it says Sisuka Embo. I don't know if you know the term or you've heard the word Embo. I don't know where it, where it comes from, but whenever I heard the term Kwantu Embo, mm -hmm. they always go together. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, you, you know what that could mean. But well, carry on with your train of thought. Um, yeah, so when you look at the word Bantu, um, uh, it also can mean people or the people. And the, the singular uh, form is Muntu. Or Umtu. Umtu. Or Muntu, and, yes. And, and, it's very, and, and each of the Nguni languages or subterranean languages, like in the Chua language in Malawi, they say Muntu, uh, T-H-U. And in the Hebrew, um, and, and that means person. Yeah. Uh, in the Hebrew, Dumuth, Dumuth, uh, where you see the D E M U T H, you have the consonants M, the consonants T, and also the H. You'll see that this word means uh, also a person, or uh, because man was made in God's image, in likeness, in right. similitude. So when you look at the he when you look at today's Hebrew lexicon, uh, which is a corruption of the ancient Bantu Hebrew. Um, that word is referring to a singular person, uh, and rightfully so, the plural, plural form of Muntu as Bantu. And, and so the Bantu people uh, are the children of Israel. Uh, that's just a, a term that, that we see being used today. Uh, in the Bible, you know, we, com we commonly in church say the children of Israel. But in the Bible, it does not say that. It says the sons of Israel or the people of Israel. Who is Israel? Israel, Jacob was um, one of Abraham's, well, Isaac's son. And Jacob was renamed Israel. And so when he was renamed Israel, he, he was left with that name. And he had 12 children. And his children were called the Israelites. Uh, so that's where the word Israel comes from. But it can be broken down into two words. Uh, Yashur, Yashur, and El. Yashur in Hebrew means the righteous and upright. Righteous, upright is Yashur, and then El means God. So in Hebrew, Yashur El or Israel means the righteous, up, upright ones of God, hmm. which the, the which the Hebrews or the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, that worship the one created, the one true God, they were the upright, righteous ones of God because they were the only people that didn't worship multiple idols. So they worship the creator and not the, what, what the creator created. Carry on. <laughs> so because because as, as you're talking, I, I, I keep having thoughts in my mind. Did a bit of research on Thomas Sankara mm -hmm. and how the country of Burkina Faso, as we know it today, became Burkina Faso. And I mm -hmm. remember, I think they say Burkina Faso means land of the upright people. Mm -hmm. So when you said upright people of God, I just, my mind just went there. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So the thing is, uh, the reason why a lot of this is important is because in Africa, uh, Africa is in the Bible, the land of Ham. And Ham had four sons. He had Canaan, he had Put, he had Mitzrayim or Egypt or Kemet, and he had, and he had, um, um, he had Mitzrayim, Put, Canaan, and Cush. Okay. Um, the ancient land of Cush is in Sudan. The ancient land of Egypt is in Egypt. Uh, the ancient land of Put or Libya is in Libya. The fourth son, Canaan, uh, his land was one of the largest pieces of land that was allotted to the sons of Ham. His land, his portion of land was the south part of Africa, okay. uh, south of the land of Cush, south of the land of Mitzrayim or Kemet or Egypt and south of the land of Put. Now, we see south of Sudan in Egypt, in Libya. Uh, if you go down the Nile and past Sudan, you get into Uganda. Uh, bordering Uganda, you have 
Kenya, you have Tanzania, you have uh, Bur you have Burundi and Rwanda, you have Congo, you have the Central African Republic, and if you go further south, you get into Angola, you get into Zimbabwe, and all these other southern southern countries. Um, these back in the day were considered the land of Canaan. Okay, I know that in the Christian Church we we look at northeast um, yeah i thought that would be the middle east yes and when where d and how did that confusion come about middle east is uh, when they when they kind of disconnected uh uh egyptian egypt from the sinai peninsula with the suez canal mm. the europeans came up with that term the middle east because it wasn't used back in the roman times um and that's just to confuse people to think that there's a separation between you know that area, like there's a middle west, there's a, there's a middle north, and a middle south. Um, but what people have to understand uh, that I that I talk about in my movies, especially my new movie, is that the children of Israel were told when they left with Moses and the Israelites to possess the land that I'm gonna give you, the land of Canaan, and the children of Israel were the Bantu people, and the Bantu people today are the possessors of the land south of Sudan and Egypt. Now, who was there in the southern parts of Africa beyond the Nile River? It was the African pygmy. Mm -hmm. It was the Khoi Sam, or the Khoi Khoi, or the Bushmen. They were there before the Bantu people got there. The Bantu people got there, and just as the Bible states, they possessed the land, and, and, and in essence, they dispossessed the other native people that were there in that land. Uh, so that now where does it say in the bible and just give us in the, scriptural in, in, reference. The, in the torah um i don't know exact exact strip uh scripture um but you know god told moses and also joshua that i'm going to bring you into the land that i promised your forefathers mm -hmm. abraham and isaac uh the land of canaan and when you get there you're, you're possessive uh so when you get there you're not just going to stay there and then leave after 90 days you're going to you're going to you're going to stay there and dispossess the people that are already there. And so this is the reason why the Bantu people uh, from, from West Africa, like Senegal and Gambia, all the way to East Africa, to Central Africa and South Africa, they are the, we are the majority uh, tribe, uh, the majority people. And you can tell this by DNA. I'm, I'm, my, my mind is wandering now. Because you're talking about leaving Egypt with Moses. Mm -hmm. We've been told, we grew up knowing and being told that these guys went and crossed the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And the Red Sea is towards the east. The, yes. Going towards yes. what you say has Saudi been now Arabia. called Middle East. Middle east yep. But now what, what confuses me is looking at that land and how barren and how dry <laughs> it is. And in the Bible it's referenced as the land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Where you expect huge vegetation, mm. lush green environment, mm. but you don't see that. No. And when you look at the Congo, yeah. the, um, the Congo Basin, yeah. down south, yeah. it's just greenery. Mm -hmm. It's land of milk and honey, yeah. literally. Right. Fed cows, yes. we got milk. And I, I we, can, I can you talk know? about that. So where, where, do, where does this come from? <sighs> Man. That confusion. Um, and this, was, this is a revelation that's been coming up, uh, the topic of discussion lately. Um, when the Israelites left, they left as a mixed multitude, meaning that they left with not only Israelites, but they were living amongst Egyptians and Cushites that left with them. Some of them had, some of the Israelites had intermarried with Egyptian women and Cushitic women like Moses, Canaanite women, and vice versa. So when they left, there were a people of different ethnicities, although they were being led by Moses and Joshua. And they left with cattle, livestock, and all these things. Um, and yes, the Bible does say they were being led to uh, a large, vast, wide, and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land that they would not lack anything. They mm -hmm. would have bread. They would have water. The Most High would attend to the land all year round. And that it would drink from the rains of heaven and from the waters below. Uh, it says this in the Bible. But when you look at the fact that the Israelites were, were very numerous in Egypt when they left. The state of Israel, well, let's just say that Egypt is 45 times larger than the state of Israel. So 
if the Israelites left Egypt and God told them, I'm going to bring them to a wide, vacious, a vast, spacious, wide land, and then they leave Egypt where they where had all this land, where they were living there, and they get to Israel, and they say, this is it? You told <laughs> we're going to have a, 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 a vast land. When you, look at, when you look at the story of the Exodus on the way to the land of Canaan, uh, there's certain things that they had to get um, um, that God told them to get. Um, they had a makeshift uh, tabernacle called the Tent of Meeting. So they had, they had to establish a tent, and inside the tent they had the Ark of the Covenant. They had the table for showbread. They had the golden brazen altar. They had the golden uh, uh, lampstand or the menorah. They had all these things that they had to move with them during the, the, the exodus in the wilderness. And they had to cover it uh, with, with skins and cloth. And when you look at, when you look at the, in, the things that God told them to get to make the, the Ark of the Covenant, the altar, uh, they needed uh, brass, they needed gold, they needed uh, acacia wood or shittim wood. All these things are in Africa. Um, when you look at uh, the, the different stones that you, they needed for the ephod, for the Aaronite, the high the priest to wear. Plate. The breastplate. Mm. All these stones are found in Africa. They're not found in the Sinai Peninsula. They're not all found in Saudi Arabia. They're not found in Israel. Mm. When you look at the, the outer layer of the tabernacle, the outer layer of the tabernacle had to withstand all the elements. In the Greek Septuagint, so uh, they refer to the outer layer as sea cow skins. Okay. Sea cow is what we call a manatee. Okay. It looks like a, a mermaid. People back in the old days, they used to think it was a mermaid mm -hmm. because it was uh, a mammal creature swimming in the, in the rivers, uh, freshwater rivers. A manatee, the reason why the Most High used the manatee as the outer layer of the tabernacle, a manatee skin is about an inch thick mm -hmm. and it's waterproof. A manatee stays in the water all of its life. So it cannot sweat because evaporation can't happen in the water. So the outer layer of the tabernacle has to be waterproof. And when you look at West Africa and Central Africa, you will find that the manatee is swimming inside the different river systems where they empty into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, even in the Congo River, the Zambezi River, the Niger River, the Senegal Gambia River, you'll find these manatees. And in, in, but when you look at the King James Bible, you will see different variations. You'll see uh, deer skins, goat skins, ram skins, badger skins. And all these animals are mammals, and these, ma these mammals sweat. So our skin is able to absorb water, liquids, and also to evaporate the water from inside of us when we're trying to, trying to cool down. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot have a hide covering 45 feet of a tabernacle, a 45, feet, 45 feet long tabernacle outer layer that's supposed to be waterproof when we know that a, a single animal hide is not going to withstand rain, constant rain over a test of time. It will start leaking. Mm. And how, how would it be that the Israelites will go inside the inner veil where the Ark of the Covenant is with God and there's leaks coming through the hide? Mm -hmm. The Most High made sure that he told them how to cover the tabernacle, how to break it down, how to move it, and what things that he needed. And everything that he told the Israelites to collect, to build the Ark of the Covenant, to build the altar, to have the menorah, to have the tabernacle, the outer layer, all these things are items that they could only find in Africa, not in the Middle East. And when you look at the word milk and honey, uh, we know that cows and goat make milk. Uh, there's more livestock, uh, small livestock, big large livestock in Africa than there is in Israel. There's more trees that produce bees that collect that collect honey. So you have people like the Bushmen and the Sandaway and the Hatsa people in Tanzania that they actually climb these trees and they collect the honey. So when you look at the top 50 producers of, of honey, uh, Israel is not on the list. And you have tons of countries in Africa in Sub-Saharan Africa that are on that list. And so we, we have to really look at reality um, when we look at the Bible because we look at the Bible and we think it's a, a, a European book. There's a lot of that here in South Africa.